Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare Tofu here bringing you another Minecraft Modern Warfare aircraft tutorial. In this tool we'll be going ahead and building the Eurofighter Typhoon. The Eurofighter Typhoon is a European multinational twin-engine canard delta wing multi-role fighter. The Typhoon was designed originally as an air superiority fighter and is manufactured by a consortium of Airbus, Bay Systems, and Leonardo, and conducts the majority of projects through a joint holding company, Eurofighter Jack Flugzeug. GmbH. The NATO Eurofighter and Tornado Management Agency representing the UK, Germany, Italy, and Spain manages the project and is the prime customer. The aircraft's development effectively began in 1983 with the Future European, European Fighter Aircraft Program, a multinational collaboration between the UK, Germany, France, Italy, and Spain. Previously, Germany, Italy, and UK had jointly developed and deployed the Paneva Tornado combat aircraft and desired to co collaborate on a new project with additional participants um, in the EU. Uh, however, disagreements over design authority and operational requirements led France to leave the consortium to develop the Dassault Raphael independently. A technology demonstration aircraft, the Br British Aerospace EAP first flew on August 6, 1986. A Eurofighter prototype made its maiden flight on March 27, 1994. The aircraft's name Typhoon was adopted in September 1988, and the first production contracts were also signed later that year. Um, the aircraft has also seen a lot of orders and um, actually serves in a lot of the other air forces, such as the Air Forces of Austria, Austria, Austria uh, Italy, Germany, the United Kingdom, Spain, Saudi Arabia, and Oman. Kuwait and Qatar have also ordered the aircraft and um, will should have already required, uh, acquired the aircraft by now. Uh, but overall, it's a pretty cool aircraft and the main kind of uh, fighter for the European nations is a joint fighter. Um, it's used by many European countries and flies under many different flags. Um, but the version we have in front of us here is supposed to be for the um, German uh, Luftwaffe basically design. So, uh, this is a German-marked uh, aircraft, though again, this aircraft could be customized to fit any of the nations that it serves under. Without further ado, though, let's go ahead and dive in here and take a look at the aircraft. Um, starting off with, we have the front nose of the aircraft, uh, pretty simple, nothing too crazy. We have the two forward canards, as well as the cockpit canopy there for your pilot. It's also got the large intake here, dual intake um, on the bottom. Uh, obviously, we do have a landed and in-flight version. We'll look at the in-flight version here in a second, but we do have the landed version here that does have the landing gear um, deployed. Uh, we have the Delta Wing uh, configuration for it. The kind of fuselage of the aircraft runs all the way back. Got your vertical stabilizer. Again, the German markings here with that flag. And then you have your two um, jet engines here. Pretty simple. Loadout-wise, we have... Um, some missiles, uh, pretty much just missiles solely on this version here. So a uh, total of uh, six uh, missile types on the aircraft and uh, then drop tanks as well. Uh, up on the in-flight version, it's going to be pretty much exactly the same. Your only difference here is you do not have the landing gear deployed. So you can kind of see what it looks like in the in-flight configuration. Um, overall, really cool looking design for the aircraft. I'm happy to go ahead and finally do a tutorial for this much requested aircraft. Without further ado, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial. Alrighty guys, so going ahead and moving into our tutorial, we will be going ahead and beginning with layer number 3. Now we're starting with layer 3 because layer 3 is going to give us a better basis of the aircraft to go ahead and kind of expand upon. So that is what we are going ahead and doing here. Um, in addition, if you're completely new to my aircraft tutorials, the way I like to structure these tutorials, I like to do half on camera, half off. What this means is I'm going to be going ahead and building the center line of the build on camera, and then I'm going to be going ahead and building the right side. It'll be up to you guys to take what we do on the right side, copy it over to the left side. This aircraft is symmetrical, so whatever we do on one side will be brought over to the other side. Without further ado, let's go ahead and continue on. So what we're going to start off with doing is we're going to go ahead and be placing down um, two anti-site walls. Now one quick thing to mention here is if you do want to build the aircraft landed, we will be going ahead and adding landing gear on at the end as a modification. That means we're going to be building the aircraft in the in-flight configuration and then modifying that later. So what that means for us is if you do want to build this landed, you will want to make sure you have three blocks of space between layer three and the ground level. You can see here we have one, two, three blocks of space from the ground and the start here of layer three. Make sure that, that is correct. And it's the right height of the ground because when we go back to landing gear, we will need that space to make the landing gear work. With that done though, we have our two inside walls and then we're going to place down an iron trap door coming off that front of that wall. We're going to go ahead and then build a row of stone blocks back from that uh, wall there for a total of 14 blocks. 
We're going to go ahead and then place down a piston upside down if you are not on Java so and on a different version. I'd recommend instead of a piston here to go ahead and place down an upside down stone stair. And I'll show you guys the placement here that I would go with. So I would personally do something like that instead. Um, and then we're going to place down two stone top slabs and then two iron trap doors. Um, after that's done, we're going to go back up to our front and we're going to go off this iron trap door here of one and then two and two and three iron trap doors back. Make sure they're on the top portion of the block and not on the bottom. We then want to take our black concrete. We're going to place down a black concrete block and then our stone blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen stone blocks down the center. My Java players will place down pistons upside down. If you're not on Java, I would recommend an alternative of a stone uh, full block and then a stone upside down stair, like so. For us though on Java, this is the blocks we're going to use. We're going to go ahead and then place down one and two deep slate tile blocks back like so. After that's done, we're going to take our um, iron trap doors. If you're on Java, we're going to place down a total of four iron trap doors on the side here of these three iron trap doors and this black concrete block. If you're not on Java, you can go ahead and use birchwood trap doors as an alternative. We're going to go ahead and use the command slash give at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick. So this command here, press enter will give you this glowing stick. We can then left click these iron trap doors till we get selected open false prompt, right click it and you can actually manually close those iron trap doors without a redstone source. So it will select that and help kind of form our intakes. So again, you can use birchwood trap doors on other versions as an alternative. We're going to go ahead and place down another iron uh, trap door here. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves stone slabs. We're going to place down a row of stone top slabs. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 stone top slabs back and then three iron trap doors after that. We're going to place down a second row of three of iron trap doors to the side and then one, two, three, four, five, and six stone top slabs forward, two, three, four of our andesite walls and a stone top slab and an iron trap door like that. After that, we're going to place down an iron trap door coming off the side of this wall here and then we're going to go back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine stone top slabs and then again in our row of three of iron trap doors. We're going to place down a fourth row of three of iron trap doors across. This time taking our andesite walls, we're going to go forward one, two, three, four, five, and six. Iron trap, or uh, andesite walls, and then a stone top slab, and then an iron trap door. We're going to go then place down an iron trap door coming off this first wall here. One, two, three, four, five stone top slabs back. And then we're going to place down three iron trap doors. We're going to place down an iron trap door here stone top slab like so and then after that stone top slab we're going to place down a row of andesite walls back one two three four five and then a stone top slab here on the back we're going to go then take our iron trap doors we're going to place our iron trap door come out the stone top slab and we're going to go forward five so we have one two three four five after that we're going to place down our iron trap door here then two inside walls forward like so and our iron trap door to the side and one more forward like that. We're going to go ahead and then place down two stone top slabs to the side, one back, and one forward. After we have uh, that complete, we're going to go ahead and then also grab ourselves stone slabs and coming off these andesite walls right here, we're going to place down two more stone slabs going forward. So just on that, those walls right there. And then for our um, outer stone slabs, we're going to go ahead and finish these off with a skeleton skull, come off the slab here, and then a birchwood sign on the side of the slab, as well as a sign on this back of this slab here on this side and then across all four of these sides here we're going to place down our signs so that right there is going to finish off that little pod on the tip of the wing with that all done that's going to wrap up everything we have for layer three of the build here is a top down view of what it should look like so pretty straightforward and uh, simple stuff to get us started again you're going to take what we do on the right side here and flip it over to the left side to go ahead and get that overall complete design for the layer so go ahead and take your time and now copy the other side over uh, with that though, once you guys are ready, we're going to be going ahead and then moving into our next layers, which will be layers 1 and 2. Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we'll be going ahead and moving into layers 1 and 2. For layers 1 and 2, we're going to start off by placing a stone slab on the bottom of this andesite wall. And we're going to go ahead and then place down an additional 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 stone slabs back for a total of 7. We're going to go ahead and then place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 iron trap doors back down the center. And that's going to complete your center line for this layer. To the sides of the stone slabs, we're going to place down iron trap doors, so just like that. And that will basically be on the sides there, on both sides. 
Um, once we have that all complete, we want to go ahead and then take our um, or go to our hard points and we're going to go and start our missiles. So our missiles here, we're going to go ahead and start off with by placing down a dark prismarine top sap here and right here. We're going to place down two skeleton skulls going forward and then a end rod on the tip. And we're going to go ahead and place down a polished anisite top slab on the back here. And then a birchwood fence gate to both sides of this top slab. So pretty simple stuff there for that. And then just dark oakwood signs on the side of the dark prismarine slabs. And that's going to make your first type of missile. Again, you can kind of change the orientation of where you put these. This is just kind of based off of a real model. Uh, real pictures I saw of a aircraft and replicated its loadout. I'm not sure what exactly these missiles do for, for each one. Um, obviously, some of you may know better than I do, but um, yeah, that's what we have going on here. Now, a quick thing here for my Java players, we're going to place down a block on both sides of that end rod, and we can go ahead and then grab ourselves a tripwire hook. We're going to place on the side of those blocks. We're going to go ahead and then take our debug stick we used in the first layer. We're going to left click this until we get selected facing, and we're going to go and rotate this around so that it comes off of the skeleton spool. So it's going to be this one there on the tip and just kind of helps uh, create more design there for the missile and just helps us get a little bit more accurate with it. Um, now after that is done, we're going to go ahead and then place down a row of stone full blocks that's going to be underneath the, our next uh, pylon. So these six inside walls are going to have six stone blocks underneath it. We're going to go ahead and then place down an additional one, two, and three going forward and then a skeleton skull on the tip there. We're going to place down iron trap doors on the... Uh, side of the second one right here and we're going to go ahead and then bring this back and I believe this one here can go back a total of four so we have one two three four like that and we're going to go ahead and again use our debug stick here to close them um, we're going to go and skip a space and then place down another iron trap door and close that like so and uh, we can only do that one because we do have some stuff that's going to interfere with that. So we'll leave that as is for there. And then on the inside here, we're going to go ahead and go to uh, this third block, or rather fourth block. We're going to place an iron trap door, and then we're going to follow this up with uh, three more. So one, two, three. And then we're going to go ahead and close these like so. Then on the back here, we're going to place down a fence gate, birch with fence gate on both sides of this stone block. And then the skeleton skull come off the back here. We're also going to go ahead and take our iron trap doors on the bottom of these blocks here. We're going to place down iron trap doors across the bottom to go ahead and make our uh, external uh, fuel tank. After that is done, we're going to go ahead and be replicating the same design uh, for that inner missile um, onto our next pylon. So this pylon here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just double check the positioning of it. And got it. So pretty simple. We're going to go ahead and start off with placing our two dark prismarine slabs like so. Again, we're going to be using our polished andesite on the back, so we'll place down a polished andesite top slab. Going forward from this, we're going to place down our two skeleton skulls, as well as our end rod to go ahead and complete the tip there of the missile. Um, again, for my Java players, we're going to be going ahead and doing the same technique here with our um, with our tripwire hooks, again on both sides of this leaning skeleton skull like that. And that's the reason why we don't have a trap door on the side of this um, block here. If you are on Java, you can go ahead and replace it with a trap door. Again, virtual trap doors would be a good alternative to make sure that you are able to close them and uh, you know change them however you want. We're also going to place down a virtual fence gate on both sides of this top slab, and then also dark liquid signs on the side here of these dark prismarine slabs. So it's going to look like that there for that missile. Now for the last missile we have on the tip of the wing here, it's pretty straightforward. We're going to have quartz slabs some skeleton skulls and birchwood signs, and that's really about it. We're going to go ahead and place down two smooth quartz top slabs on the bottom of these two uh, walls here, a skeleton skull on the back, and then we're going to place down one, two, and three skeleton skulls forward. We're also going to place down birchwood signs on the side of the quartz top slabs like that to go ahead and finish it off. And once we have that all done right there, that is going to finish off what we have for our loadout. Again, you'll be taking the same thing, copying it over to the other side, and you'll have your missiles um, all added on. Anyway, so that is it for layers one and two, and with that, let's go ahead and dive into our next layer, layer number four. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer four, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to begin with by going ahead and placing down a stone block that's going to go on top of this andesite wall here. We're going to place down two upside down pistons. These can be substituted for two stone top slabs instead as an alternative. We're going to go ahead and place down two stone full blocks, and then right here, we're going to place down another two upside down pistons for my Java players. 
An alternative to this right here will be a stone full block and a stone top slab. So um, again, that is an alternative uh, for you guys to use. We're going to go then place down a stone top slab and then an iron trap door to go ahead and finish off our front there. Going ahead and going back from this stone block, we're going to go ahead and place down an additional row of stone full blocks all the way down the center of the aircraft for a total of 20 blocks. Should end on top of this iron trap door right here on the back. We're going to go ahead and then place down two of our deep slate tile walls. Going back like so. If you want to have your aircraft with the engines turned off, we will be going ahead and doing a technique where we place down a black concrete block here and then a stone button coming off it. So that will be the engines turned off. If you want the engines turned on, we can go ahead and also do that. Um, this will be using um, glowstone or um, any kind of the, those light up blocks you can use. Um, and then we're going to go and use glass. And for me, I like to use um, orange stained glass full blocks, which I actually think are over here. So I'm going to go and grab those real quick. So if you want to have the engine kind of turned on, you can go ahead and place down an orange stained glass block and a glowstone block. So it kind of depends on what you want to do here for the aircraft. Since we have the aircraft in flight or going to be landed here, I'm going to go ahead and just use the black concrete technique instead. But the glowstone is really good if you have the aircraft taxiing or if you have it um, in flight. We're going to go ahead and take our stone blocks. We're going to go ahead and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 uh, stone blocks forward. We're going to go ahead and place down a stone stair, a second stair, so you have a corner stair and a normal stair. And then 1, 2 andesite walls, 2 stone top slabs, 2 andesite walls, and 2 skeleton scrolls like that on the sides of those walls or on the side of those pistons. Um, after that, again, for my Java users, we're going to be going ahead and you. Uh, place down a block space from this wall. We're going to use a tripwire hook and use our debug stick here to rotate the tripwire hook so it comes off the side of the wall. Uh, we want to go then place down two iron trap doors coming off these two um, blocks here. And then we're going to take our stone slabs. We're going to place down a top slab here, one slab back, one slab to the side. So it's going to look like that. And then we're going to place down two iron trap doors. One come off this wall, one come off the stair here. Um, after we have that done, uh, we want to go ahead and then grab ourselves an item frame. And we're going to go ahead and uh, place down an item frame on the side here of this block and a um, iron bar in the item frame. Um, after that's done, we're going to go ahead and place down two iron trap doors, a stone slab, and one, two, three stone stairs. Followed by a polished black stone slab, and then one, two, three stone stairs, and then one, two, three, four, five andesite walls. Followed by a stone brick wall, a deep slate wall, and a black stainless pane to go ahead and finish off um, the fuselage here of the aircraft. Now the rest of this is going to be solely focused on the wings. Uh, we're going to go ahead and place down two light gray carpet here and then we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven iron trap doors back and then again two light gray carpet. We're going to place down two light gray carpet here and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine iron trap doors and two light gray carpet. Again, we're going to place down one, two, three, four uh, light gray carpet. And then we're going to place down one, two, three, four um, iron trap doors. And then one, two, three light gray carpet. Uh, again, we're going to take our light gray carpet. We're going to go, ahead and go all the way across this row here. And then our next row here, we're going to do the same thing. Just light gray carpet going all the way across to keep that color nice and consistent. Um, this section here. We're going to go ahead and place down three light gray carpet, so one, two, three, then a black carpet, and then a light gray. Again, that black carpet there is where that logo for the Air Force will go on. Um, this is the German one, so this is based off of the German markings. Uh, we're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three, four light gray carpet, then one, two, and then four iron trap doors on top of these stone top slabs. After we have that all done right there, that is going to wrap up everything we have for... Um, this layer. Again, you'll take the same thing, copy it over to the other side, and this is what it should look like from the top down view with layer five all com or layer four all complete. With that though, we'll be going ahead and moving on to layer number six. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number five. For layer five to go ahead and get started with you, we're gonna place down a light gray carpet on top of this iron trap door. We're gonna go ahead and place down a daylight detector, turn that to the night mode, a stone slab, and a piston. Again, the piston here can be substituted for a stone stair position like that. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of stone full blocks down the center line of the aircraft. This here is going to be a total of 27. On the end of that row, we're going to place down an item frame, and then we're going to place down a light gray bed in the item frame with the pillow facing upwards. 
If you're on Java, we can also place a birchwood sign on the side of that block as well, just to kind of help blend the item frame a little bit more into the aircraft. So um, you can do that. If not, then um, you can go ahead and just place down the item frame if you're not on Java. We're going to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull on the side of this piston or stair, whichever you have placed. Then one and two like racing with paints back. This little note here is that unfortunately the tripwire hook will probably break. Um, so you will need to go ahead and actually uh, update it. So if uh, you did do that before, you'll have to update that. Um, pretty simple, quick little fix, but do apologize for that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three, four, five, six andesite walls, followed by a polished blackstone wall, black concrete, stone block, two black concrete, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stone blocks, followed by one, two, three, four pistons, a stone brick slab, a deep slate uh, tile, and a uh, daily detector turned to the night mode like so on the very end. An alternative here for these pistons uh, would probably be stone stairs. i say it would be a good uh, option instead, but again, we'll be using our pistons here for that. Um, anyways, with that uh, all finished on the sides of the fuselage here, we are going to go ahead and need to grab some item frames and some birchwood signs again for my Java players. Uh, some red concrete and some white beds. Uh, we're gonna place down item frames on the sides here. So one, two, three. They're gonna be located on the third from the front wall, on in the fourth and the fifth. We're gonna place down a red concrete block, kind of at a diagonal on the side of this block. Birchwood sign if you're on Java. Then we're gonna place down white beds sideways like so. Again, birchwood signs on the side of those blocks, like that if you're on Java. So it's gonna look like that there. Then after we have that done, we're gonna go ahead and place down a stone button on both sides here uh, of these are on the those uh black concrete blocks just like that and that right there would be where the uh german air force or something like that if i recall correctly um it's been a little bit since i built this model but uh german air force or something like that would be written on the side there the fafa or whatever um anyways though that is going to conclude what we have there um we do have this little banner design um but i will be going ahead and showing you guys how to make all the banners at the end of the video and also if you're on java just a quick thing you can also place down a light gray con light gray carpet right here with this item frame as well um unfortunately again for my java or my non-java users you will not be able to do that um, anyways though, that is going to conclude everything we have for this layer here, and let's move on to our next. Moving into our next layer, we have layer 6. For layer 6 to begin with, we're going to place down another brick slab that's going to go right here on top of that second stone block, followed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 black stained glass blocks back. We're going to go ahead and place down two pistons. On the side of these pistons here, um, again an alternative here to the pistons would probably be a uh, stone, I would say probably a stone uh, stair maybe stone stair and a stone slab would be okay for that um, but basically on the side of these two blocks here we're going to place down two skeleton skulls we're going to go and then place down a wither skeleton skull forward and then we're going to place down one two three four black stained glass panes going forward from that over here on the left side we have a bit of a different design here this is going to be using a um, lever that's going to be on the top of this glass pane um, and we're going to be going ahead and doing this by using our debug stick here we're going to go ahead and left click this with our debug stick till we get selected face, it should say wall, we're going to change that to floor. We're going to left click this again, selected facing, and we're going to go and rotate this so it points forward. So it's going to look something like that. And then we're going to have our wither skeleton skull on top of this glass pane. Uh, probably an alternative here, instead of the lever you can use a skull, just a normal skeleton skull right there instead of the lever as an alternative, but lever there is going to be the best technique to use, and that's going to complete that right there. Um, then going back from these pistons, we have our stone slabs. We're going to place down a row of three of stone slabs, a row of three of daylight detectors turned to night mode, and then we're going to have our three iron trap, sorry, four iron trap doors back. To the sides of these, we're just going to go ahead and run light gray carpet all the way along the side of those blocks. On the very back here, we're going to go ahead and skip two spaces, and on our third, we're going to place down a stone block, a skeleton skull going forward from it, and then going back from the stone block, we're going to go one, two, three, and four more, so you have a total of five. And a site wall on the back, and then an end rod coming off the the um, wall just like that and once you have that all done right there that is going to complete everything we have there for layer number six of the build and uh, with that we'll be going ahead and moving into our last final layers moving into our last final layers we have layers seven through twelve for these layers to begin with we're going to go ahead and place down a daylight detector on top of the second block here turn that to night mode an air brick slab and our daylight detector turned in night mode directly after that and that is going to um, form your cockpit there after that, we're going to go to the back here. We're going to place down a stone stair that's going to go on top of this block here. 
stone full block and then a uh, white glazed terracotta. This is some logo um, that is on the aircraft. I'm not 100% sure um, what it means, but it, again, the aircraft we use for reference. That is what we uh, went ahead and placed. Then we're going to place down two more stone blocks back. Going up, we're going to place down another, and or another stone block. Uh, then we have one, two, three uh, back. A light gray thing with paint. A narrow stone stair, one, two stone blocks, inside wall. A narrow stone stair, stone full block, second block, so you have two blocks there. We're gonna go up with a narrow stone stair, a narrow stone full block, and a light gray stainless paint on the back here with an iron trap door on top. Um, and that right there is going to basically uh, complete what we have there for your vertical stabilizer. At this point in time for my uh, Java players, we're gonna go ahead and then take our debug stick here and we're gonna go ahead and left click each one of these pistons until we get selected ex extended false pop up. We're gonna go and right click this, set this to true. And we're gonna do this for all the pistons we placed on the build. What this is gonna do is it's gonna kind of create that recessed look design that just kind of helps us slope a lot of these areas and it just kind of fixes a lot of these areas overall. Um, one quick thing to, to note though is that if you do update the block space around the piston, so if I break that skeleton school or if I place a block um, underneath this piston, it will uh, cause the pistons to change back. So just try to avoid playing around with blocks too close to the pistons because you will cause them to revert back and you'll have to fix them. Um, anyways though, once we have all those pistons done, that's going to pretty much wrap up what we have there for that. And at this point in time, uh, we'll be going ahead and now moving into the banners. Uh, that we have on the tail of the aircraft and also on the um, on the sides. So let me go ahead and grab the materials and I'll show you guys how to make those banners. All right, guys. So when it comes to making these banners, they're really simple to do. Um, we're gonna start off with our um, cross. This is gonna be done by uh, going ahead and obviously place down a loom. Now the banner and the materials we're gonna need for both banners is gonna be a light gray die or light gray banner, black banner, one black die, two white die, uh, five light gray die one red die, and one yellow die. We're gonna go into our loom, we're gonna place down our light gray banner, and our white die. Our white die, we're gonna go ahead and do the line that goes vertically, like this, and the one that goes horizontally, like that for the center, to go ahead and create this white cross. We're gonna put this banner back into the loom, and then we're gonna go ahead and place down our black die in the loom. We're gonna go ahead and select this cross shape that goes through the banner, and it looks something just like that. So, uh, after we have that done, that is going to Create that, we're gonna grab that, put that back into our loom, we're gonna go ahead and then place down our light gray die. We're gonna do the line that goes horizontally across the top, the line that goes ho horizontally across the bottom, and then we wanna go and do the uh, border, light gray border that's gonna go all the way around to create this cross shape. Now this banner here is gonna go on the side of this stone block on both sides of the fuselage. So right there in between those black concrete blocks. And that's your first banner out of the way. Next banner we have here is going to be um, the Germany flag. We're going to go into our item frame, we're going to place down our black banner and our yellow die. We're going to split the banner in half of having yellow on the bottom, so it should be yellow on the bottom, black on top, split directly in half. We're going to grab this banner, put it back into our loom. We then want to go ahead and place down our red die, and we're going to go ahead and do a horizontal line right for the center, like so. We're going to go and grab that banner, put it back into our loom, along with our light gray die, we're going to do a line across the top of light gray die, and a line across the bottom to go ahead and create our uh, German flag. And this German flag is going to be positioned right here on both sides of the vertical stabilizer, just like that. And once you have that all done right there, that is going to wrap up what we have for the in-flight version of the build. And all of our banners are complete and everything we have going on. At this point in time, we're going to go ahead and now move into the tutorial for the landed version, which will be showing you guys how to go ahead and add the landing gear onto the aircraft. Um, but with that, that's going to do it for the in-flight version. Let's go ahead and move on to the landed version. All right, guys, so going ahead and moving into our landed version, we're going to be going ahead and putting the landing gear onto the aircraft. We're going to be going ahead and starting with our front wheel, and this is going to be built right here underneath our intake. We're going to go ahead and go to the third and fourth stone slabs back, and we're going to go ahead and delete those so we have this empty space here. We're going to place down a birchwood fence post that's going to drop down like so from that, and then we're going to go ahead and then uh, drop a block that's going to come down from that um, fence post and out to the side, the right side like so. We'll delete this block, place down a skeleton school so it's kind of off to the side here, and then delete this block. We're also going to place down a uh, block of coal right underneath this um, skeleton school like so. We're going to place down a lever on this side here, and if you're on if you're not on Java, you can place down a lever also coming off the skeleton school. However, since we're on Java, we're going to be going ahead and using technique used before. We're going to place down a block that's kind of spaced out, a lever here, and then we're going to use our debug stick here, left click this selected facing, we're going to go ahead and set this so it comes off the skull, left click this again till we have selected powered false, right click this so it's true and it 
it's flicked down and connects up to that one right there. So it's going to cr create something that looks like that. We're also going to place it on a birchwood fence gate coming off the skeleton school. Going forward, and open it up toward it like so. Then on the sides, we're going to delete these two iron trap doors on the left side only, and we're going to place down two stone upside down stairs in its place for the landing gear doors. Lastly, we have this white banner here. This is very simple. It's a white banner that has a black border and a black horizontal line for the center. I'm not going to show you guys how to make it in the loom because it's really simple. And this is just going to sit on the side of the block of coal like that. And uh, once you have that done, that's going to do it for your front uh, landing gear. And we'll be going ahead and now moving on to our rear landing gear. All right, guys, so moving into our rear landing gear, we're going to be going ahead and starting with by going ahead and going to this section here. So we have these iron trap doors. We're going to go and delete the two stone blocks right next to them, so the space here. And then we're going to delete this one stone slab that goes forward. We can then go ahead and place down the iron trap doors inside here just to kind of go ahead and give it a bit of color for that um, wheel, um, kind of the wheel well there. We're going to place our birchwood fence gate underneath this first one. It's going to come down like so. We're going to open this toward the outside of the build. We're going to go ahead and drop down again at an angle. Place in our fence gate and open it to the side here again. So it looks like that. We're going to go ahead and then place down our birchwood fence post here. Fence post on top of that. We're going to go ahead and replace this stone slab here with a stone upside down stair like so. Uh, below this fence post, we're going to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull like so. So it's going to look like that. And then we're going to place down a polished blackstone wall and a second wall going back. We're going to place down two wither skeleton skulls on top of those walls. Try to make it so that the, the heads are facing toward each other, the faces, so that the faces aren't really too visible. But that's going to go ahead and make your wheel like so. And after that, we want to go ahead and place down our two blocks here. Again, for my Java players, we're going to place down our levers here. We're going to go ahead and take that one, first one, make sure it's powered. And then we're going to go ahead and rotate them around. So that they come off the fence post there and also the skeleton school on the bottom like that um, again there's really no alternative to that for any other versions but just a nice little detail bit to add for my java players anyways though that is going to complete the landing gear there you're going to take that same design copy it over to the other side and once you have that done on both sides that is going to wrap up the landing gear um, and that overall is going to wrap up my tutorial here for the Eurofighter Typhoon. Hope you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it to good use. If you do amuse this build, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This has been thinking from a solid build to my channel or this video if this does create social media sites. As long as you guys uh, give me proper credit for the build, you're free for a project you guys are working on. Um, overall, enjoy the build, have fun with it, and all that fun stuff. And with that, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary 2x4, and I'll see you guys next time.